Hey, it's Karen Bryant for M. Mayheed. I'm here speaking now with Damian Maya, who is a UFC middleweight who will be taking on Chris Weidman at the UFC on Fox show. Damian, thank you so much for taking some time to talk to me today. Thank you, Karen. So, obviously, this was a big deal to change opponents last minute. Can you walk us through that afternoon or that morning when you found out and, and what your reaction was? Yeah, actually, it was an afternoon. I was in my house and I was, you know, in, in a shower and the cell phone doesn't stop, you know. It was it was ringing all the time and my wife came and said, something must happen because, yeah, you know, your phone doesn't stop and then I called Eduardo. I, I read was, I was thinking that Bisping could be hurt or something like that, but then I, they said what happening. In First of all, I was a kind of sad mm -hmm. and then after that, you know, when we, we found a new opponent, you know, everything was fine. Right. Well, actually, it was funny because when I first heard, I immediately texted him and said, what, you know, what are you going to do and what's going to happen and what do you, you know, who are you going to fight? And he said, oh, my gosh, I haven't even told Damien yet. I think Eduardo was even just kind of trying to take a minute to process it. But what happened then? Did you call Joe Silva and say, I'll take anybody? Or did you, you know, were you really worried about get, staying on that fight card? Yeah, my main... The first thing was to stay in that car because I know, you know, for me it was very important to be in this car. I, I want to fight on Fox. I know how important it is. Um, but it was hard to find an opponent in like two weeks. But then, you know, Joe did a great job and, you know, found Chris and we got a fight. Mm -hmm. So was there any concern or, or any um, consideration, rather, I should say, about maybe fighting in Japan and trying to get on that card? Because that's also going to be a big deal. You know, it was a kind of... was couple of hours that we think a lot of things, yeah. a lot of stuff. But at one point I just relaxed and then I said, okay, let's see what happens. I, it's, an, it's out of my control. I just want to wait. And after like a couple of hours, you know, they came out if Chris and everything was okay. Mm -hmm. So how much do you know about Chris in advance of your fight? Oh, sorry. That's okay, bless you. <laughs> Chicago is a little bit cold. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, I saw Chris fighting the last time when he fought Tom Lawler. Mm -hmm. I was pretty impressed with his submission. And then, you know, after I found out that I was going to fight him, we just, you know, started to study his videos. Well, it's interesting, too, because you're known for being such a, a great jiu-jitsu practitioner, and yet he's said that he's not afraid of you because we have seen he, he's able to submit people as well. But how do you compare your two skills, and do you think, you know, that you do have as great an advantage as some people say you do in that, in that element? It's good that he's not afraid because, you know, I, I'm not afraid even. You know, I trust in my jiu-jitsu skills, and I know everything can happen. But I have more experience. I fought in jiu-jitsu for many years. I trained with the best guys. So I know that's my advantage in the fight. But of course, you know, everything he happens. He's good on jiu-jitsu, you know. He, he probably going to try to pull out some good submissions. But, you know, I'm right to defend. Mm -hmm. Well, when the fight first got announced between you and Michael Bisping, that was a pretty big deal. How, what did that fight mean to you in terms of where you think it puts you in the division or just in, in, in general in your career? What what was the fight with Bisping going to mean to you? I think nowadays the fans, they're much more educated about fighters and they know how tough people are, how, you know, the, the real thing, not just, you know, okay, Bisping, he has a, a great name, he's a tough guy, but Weidman, People doesn't know him so well, but they know he's re real, you know, a real deal. Also, he's really tough. So I think you know it pretty much is gonna put me in the same spot if I if I can win this fight. Mm -hmm. Although now you're fighting somebody that's perceived as kind of a good guy, whereas a lot of people see Michael as a bad guy, and um, it, it helps with momentum. I think sometimes if you're fighting somebody, people think is a bad guy. Would you agree? Uh, you know, for me, Mike is not a bad guy. It's just you know. His, uh, how he show up to the camera and how he's, he's, uh, he's a persona, you know, is that like a, how, how I say, it's uh, not himself, it's just a, like a character. Right. And I think he's a good guy, so for me, you know, really, really doesn't matter. This is for the public, this is for the show, but, you know, between us, the fighters, we know who is who, and, and some people you think are very nice, they are not so nice, some people, People think you're bad guys, you know, depends 
how the guy uh, acts in front of the, the camera and the defense. So it doesn't matter. I think, you know, when I go into fight, I don't care about that. Just just go there and care about, you know, fighting. I don't let, I let everything aside. I just keep concentrating on fight because in the end of the day, we're just both athletes. We go there to fight and, you know, the rest is the rest. Mm -hmm. I actually like him a lot. I find him very entertaining and, uh, uh -huh. you know, but I, he does, you know, have a little bit of a reputation in, in the States here. But conversely, you, you know, you're actually known to be such a nice guy. Do you think that that, that ever hurts you that, you know, like that people don't know that you're, that you're, you know, like a badass actually, that you're always just known, oh, Damien Mai is such a nice guy? No, it, it doesn't, doesn't mean nothing, you know. I don't know even if I'm that nice guy. <laughs> But uh, I just myself, uh, I think I try to be myself because I think it's more real. If I try to, to fake something, it's not going to be real. And I think the, the people will realize and will be fake. So, you know, I just try to, to be myself and that's it. What do you think of the class right now? Obviously, you and Michael and Mark and Chael are all kind of mixed up there at the top. Who do you really think is the is the next person who really should be challenging Anderson? Who do you think has the best chance of beating him, including if you think it's yourself? I think nowadays, you know, of course I want to fight Anderson, but I think the best chance is Chael. He already showed that. Uh, and, you know, if he beats Mike. Definitely, he, he should have the chance to, to fight him. And does that Anderson fight still bother you that, that you had with him? Or have you just put it he, out Yeah, a little bit. You know, uh, we, we pass, you know, we, we try to forget stuff. But of course, you know, sometimes I think about, uh, you know, I want one day to fight him again for sure. Yeah. So now that you're in the States, is there anything that you love to eat when you get here? I mean, you know, I know whenever I go to Canada, I have to get a, a coffee crisp bar because they don't sell them here in the States. So whenever I go over there, I, I, I OD on them. Anything here in the States that you, I know you can't really eat too much right now, maybe, but yeah, anything that's that, that you treat yourself that, to when you do get to the States? There's a lot of things that I love to eat here. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's great food here because like in Brazil, there's people from all around the world. So yeah. you can find Italian food, you know, you can find all mixed with American food, like it, Italian, but you know, I read like uh, Italo-American food mm -hmm. or, you know, like in Brazil, the same, a lot right. of foreign, so it makes a good food. Right. And of course, the junk food, you know, <laughs> here, it's famous in Brazil for the junk food and it's great, but in, actually... Before fights, I can't eat that. So, you right. know, let's see after the fight, then I go eat some junky food. <laughs> right, right. Well, and you can obviously indulge in some deep dish pizza in Chicago. It's, it's definitely known for that, for part of, uh -huh. part of what they're famous for. Um, Damien, I did want to point out, we are going to be giving away one of your gloves that we got uh, from nice. Bad Boy. Nice. And, yeah, I just want to make sure that this is legit, right? That that's really your, your yeah, signature, that's right? My, yeah, that's my signature, yeah. Okay. Or if the guy is very good on fake, that is somebody <laughs> right. that All right, looks cool. like so mine. We're going to figure something out to do this week. I think we, um, we've done something before with some of the bad boy guys where we had them write. Yeah, I remember a, I saw uh, yeah. Yeah, a rhyme about you. So we'll, so we'll probably do that. And, um, and if I remember now, your daughter is probably about one year old now? Today, she turned one year old. Oh. Today's her birthday. Yeah, wow, the very first. Nice. Well, congratulations! Year. And uh, yeah, I just called to Brazil, but you know, yeah, uh, uh, it's it's very nice. It's a very great day for me. And uh, fortunately, I can't be there. But you know, for her, it doesn't matter because she doesn't understand yet. <laughs> so it's it's great, anyways. Right, right. Well, so she doesn't know what daddy does yet for a living. Uh, I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, thank you for taking the time, and uh, we wish you best of luck, and I'm, I'm sure the fans are going to be in for a good show on Saturday night. So uh, best of luck to you, Damien, and thanks again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen.